All right, so y'all have missed everything and I got a lot of updating to do real fast. So bear with me on this. Um, I paid my mechanic. He's about 45 minutes to an hour away. Shout out to Jeff Ling. Uh, he is the guy, actually, if you watched my biggest video on this I channel. painted an orange rollback for a local rollback company. That's Jeff's. That video has pulled 220,000 views on single stage painting a rollback. Uh, biggest video on the channel. So shout out to Jeff. Me and Jeff's been working together for a while now. Uh, very knowledgeable guy. He's the one that does all of our mechanic work. Jeff come down and he dived into the modules. I did not even start filming out of respect for number one. Number two, we could literally be filming for hours before we figure out the issues. And he got in there. There was a module that wasn't communicating with the dash. Um, and then the restraint modules, uh, had crash data in it. Of course we knew. I mean, we obviously deal with crash data all the time. It's what I do for a living. Um, but one interesting thing that was coming up on his was something was locked out in there. Now, he was curious if that restraint module having a lockout code in there was keeping the truck from firing. So what he did was he said, well, let's just unplug the restraint module and let's clear the codes out after we unplug it. We know they're going to come back, but this will at least flat delete out the soft codes. There will be hard codes still in there. We deal with this all the time with collisions. Um, and vehicles run all the time with airbags deployed. Like we've never seen a vehicle not run with crash data in the module, never. I bought my white F-250 before I was doing YouTube was rolled upside down, airbags deployed and it still ran. So we tear everything apart. We have to remove the seats out of this thing. This, I mean, everything, the seats are all out. Center console come up. We unplug the module because the module is located underneath the center console. And then he's in the scanner working, working, trying to figure things out. And then all of a sudden, Eddie's like, um, he's messing with something over here. Jeff goes to turn the key, truck fires up. So Eddie come right here to this guy. It's got a little fuel door on it. And then there is a button inside there. Now, when you Google, do these trucks have inertia switches? The answer is no. Uh, most of the Fords that we deal with don't have inertia switches. It's kind of an older technology, it seems like. Uh, a lot of these F-150s that we find they don't normally have this issue. A lot of these trucks don't have this issue. A lot of these cars don't have these issues no more. Um, when you Google it, Google says they don't have it. One of them forms where the master technician that you can pay to help you out and then it posts to the public. Somebody had also asked if it had a nurse switch and a certified master technician said it does not, that the crash data and the module cuts the fuel pump off, which I did not believe. It ends up, long story short, short it has an inertia switch right back here. So Eddie pushed the button, truck fired off, runs like a champ. We immediately shut it off though, really quick. And I'm not going to duplicate it for y'all because I already knew that we had a busted oil cooler right here. So this line right here is busted off of that oil cooler and that's what come out. So we don't want to run it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we are about to head to the local pick and pull. They have one of these trucks out there all the way from last year to seventh month of last year. So it's pretty stripped down, but I'm curious if they have that cooler on there and what suspension is left in it that I might be able to grab. All right, lots of cutting and undoing bolts. I'm trying to get this bumper to come off. There we go. Come on, baby. This thing is freaking mangled. There's literally like no bolts in it except for one little bracket and it's trying to pull the whole truck up on top of that 4x4. It's crazy how mangled that thing is. Alright, let's hook some more, pull some more chain in. Oh, man. And I'm also like starting to not feel good, I feel sick. There's the bumper. Um, the more I looked at it at the pick and pull, I'm not 100% sure if the frame rails are bent. Um, there is a kink in the one at the pick and pull, the same exact spot. So I think that's factory. Um, it's just this one over here just really looks like it's curved into me, but it could be all in the tow hook. It's just messing me up, throwing me for a loop. Um, I'm feeling extremely sick right now, so I don't know how much I can push forward. I really need to get all this broke down, but I guess I should go ahead and just order all the parts first. Uh, looks like radiator, AC condenser, intercooler, um, pretty much everything except for that guy up there. 
everything is going to be destroyed. It's probably going to be fan shroud, fan, everything. We got to get back in there and look. But, dude, I guarantee you it's going to be, like, practically everything. Um, man, I really wish I wasn't feeling like crap. It's like I want to push on, but I'm almost feeling like I'm coming down with a fever. And this is what got me a couple weeks back. Just pushing myself too far. So it might be best just to pause take a breather all i gotta do is get that one little box changed out i got it pick and pull though but it's kind of hard to get to with all this crap in the way so i would love to just change it with it out but yeah all right so my beautiful wife was sitting there now she's in the office making a phone call um she was helping me sort all these parts so as we break this apart you've got to find every single one of these parts on ebay and this is what she does for a living with me when me and eddie do all of our repairs of our wrecked vehicles we tell her what we need and she finds parts uh tremendously thankful to have the wife i have um she paid for the truck for me i bought it i text her i say hey pay for the truck she handles paying for it i say hey get it to the shop she handles transporting it and i say hey can you give me a hand finding parts she comes out here and helps me find parts so she's beyond amazing and i'm gratefully thankful um, we got this thing broke down and as you can see, you know, we knew we had the damage in the center. So we definitely have the crossbar in the center. I don't know if I'm just going to pull that out or cut it out. I probably honestly should just pull it out, not waste my time. Even cutting it, it literally does nothing at all, except for it's just part of the cab, the main frame support right here. It just ties them together. So pull it forward and get it off the hoses, make sure it's clearing the fan and then, um, really no reason to do nothing there's really no reason to cut it out but we'll see we'll see uh this is the box that i said needs to be replaced of course a second ago it's still not easy to get to so i got this big piece around the fan i think i'm about to try to zip it off i just hate undoing stuff that don't need to be undone with it apart that frame rail does not look bent to me this one is still in question but the more i look at it it really kind of does not look bent anymore at all now that i have it um taken apart but that is where we are currently at i'm extremely extremely tired feeling it hurting i think i'm about to get very sick you know when you can start feeling it come on all right so it's been a minute on this truck since i've uh recorded so it might be far apart from the last one but dad's going back in here now that we know it's run and we are fixing the wiring uh like it should be so we're doing a nice uh, butt connector on there with a very very nice piece of heat shrink and we extended that wire back so we put it under the terminal like it's supposed to be and we got to wrap up our other wires wrap them back up and then cut this one down so that it fits more appropriately in length um oh no that one's already done he already did that one so and then he spliced that one down in there there's a special splice if you can't see it's got a lot of electrical tape over it because it is a metal splice and then what's it called split bolt split bolt so some of y'all older guys will probably know what he's talking about whereas i know what it looks like but i had no clue what it was uh so split bolt splice um but he put a lot of electric tape over that and then he's going to take a rubber hose that he's got that made that's going to go over that also with a zip tie so it can't ever rub loose um on here i went ahead and did the serpentine belt because the serpentine belt had a little bit of dry rotting to it and as you can see, it is not uh, user friendly. This is not a serpentine belt that you want to do in the parking lot or out of town towing when it pops the belt. Uh, so we put a went ahead and put a brand new seventy five dollar belt on it, just so that's done. Um, he's getting that done, and I think we'll be able to pull this thing back out over to the frame rack and go ahead and pull the bottom, get the bottom pulled out, and then I have everything in for the radiators and everything. Um, I've got the lower fan shroud that's up there, all the radiators, AC connectors, whole nine yards. And then we scored a bumper. Uh, so we stored a, scored a steel bumper. If you watch my rebuilds in the past, you know my pre or my current truck, we also did a steel bumper. We actually did body filler on a, on a chrome bumper uh, and straightened it out a little bit and then did the appropriate work for it and um, painted it. So we're gonna basically do the same thing to save us money. I got a deal locally. Um, bumper and the tow hooks the tow hooks are going black unfortunately but these are bent up and i have bent them back straight before in the past but these are what set your bumper okay so if you fight with these things um sometimes it's a pain in the butt it's basically not worth fighting with these 
and getting the bumper wrong. We can just switch the black tow hooks. We'll spray paint them. Nobody will even notice that the chrome tow hooks are missing. Probably we're not putting a platinum grill back on it because the platinum grill is like two thousand dollars. So we'll be putting a painted to match grill on it, more like a lariat look, even though it's a platinum. Uh, somebody else in the future when I sell the truck, if I sell the truck, which I sell everything, it's not, it's not lie here. They can always bolt on a platinum grill and a platinum hooks if they want. But I'm not. So the tow hooks on eBay are $300 for these tow hooks. For a set of tow hooks on eBay, you're going to pay about 300 bucks for the freaking tow hooks. Uh, so if you've got a set, you might want to list yours on eBay because they're worth big money. Um, however, I scored the deal on the whole front bumper with the tow hooks for 300 bucks. So just the steel, a paintable steel bumper with nothing on it, no brackets, no plastics, no nothing on eBay is about 219 plus 300 on the hooks. You'd be about five something on eBay, 300 for all this. Now we'll of course throw away the plugs uh, for the fog lights that just come off a work truck and we'll put legit fog lights in it. I'll order all that, but it's got all the plastics, all the uh, brackets, everything. We saved me big bucks. Like I said, that $220 bumper on eBay doesn't come with any of the brackets or anything. So you still have to buy all that too. So you'd be talking a lot of money. Uh, the difference is the 250 and 350 bumpers don't have the end caps. They don't have the little flares on them like that right there. So these bumpers have holes in them for the flares. Now what I did on my, you can see they're bolted in right there. What I did on my previous 450, the black one that I had, is I'll actually cut the ends of these bumpers off and I'll build, use them as a template I'll lay it over top of this and I'll drill the holes in this bumper to build a bolt of flares on it. It's just two bolts, super simple. Saves you a lot of money versus having to buy a 450 bumper because it's the exact same bumper. It just has four more holes in it. So we're going to finish up the electrical and then get this thing possibly on the frame rack this afternoon. One thing that's nice about these trucks is the wide track option is they turn freaking amazing. They turn better than a 250 and better than a 350 because they have the wide track. That's one thing I love when I have my black 450. It's a big, uh, it's a big um. But man, having that thing freaking uh, tow trailers with and go to the racetrack with is going to be super nice. Stoked. Right now we're just getting it out. I'm going to put it on the frame rack. Super sketchy. This frame rack is definitely not intended for anything this big. You can see how far the tires hang over on both sides. I mean, you don't have a freaking inch to spare. This thing's, this thing's wide. Yeah, I don't remember why the last 450 fit. It could have a different track radius. It was an 11. It was a 13. True. And the back tires were hanging off all the way to the back. We had all the arms swung out. Actually, it wouldn't even go on here with the back tires on because of the pins and the arms. It wouldn't even clear the arm, this piece right here. I remember we, I had to take one rim off completely to get it even backed up on here. It was a nightmare to get the thing on here. Maybe the front was like that and we just don't remember. Um, you know, but I don't need it all the way on here. I'm not going to pick up the frame record, not like that. All I got to do is pull that stuff forward. So I'll just hook change just like that. There's no reason to be picking it up. But the last 450 I did, uh, I did put it completely on here and I did pick it up. You have to use another jack to help. The frame rack lift up and uh we completely put it up here backwards and it barely fit like at all it was freaking nuts chained the crap out of it and we pulled it so that's where we're at y'all watch the uh, video on the fort lift as you can see it's running amazing um i'm gonna get this thing together i figured i'd just give y'all an update you know where we're at because i kind of left y'all hanging on the last one uh we just bought another item for the channel that's absolutely mind-blowing what i paid for it so the deals are happening like crazy so we're gonna try to make some progress on this truck today. Um, I'm feeling like crap, but I'm here, I'm struggling. Got the ookie dookies with the water. <laughs> Man, dude, I just, it seems like every week I'm just losing all my strength and um, my body's just like giving out at the end of every week. It's been like that since, if y'all remember when I went to Glot, I was struggling. Last week I was sick, Thursday and Friday. This Wednesday, Thursday, I'm sick. Um, I, I've been struggling a lot lately, y'all. So we got this thing up here on the frame rack. All right, let's take a look at it. I do got my buddy here with me today. Harper, are you helping? <laughs> you gonna say hey? Can you say hey? Mm -mm. Okay, 
She's camera shy. All right, so um, we need to pull this cross member. All right, so this cross member is mangled up right here. All right, see how that thing's all mangled up? So we just want to get that back forward where it's basically a straight line across there. So we're gonna loosen these bolts real fast so we can relieve any tension. And then our frame rails are in one inch too much. They need to be out. So I don't know what frame rail is. I don't have any fancy equipment or computer systems or anything. So I just kind of go off common sense. What it looks like to me, it always looked like that frame rail was bent. However, you got me, did you take mommy's keyboard thing? You took her calculator keyboard? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. That goes to mommy's computer. But now that it's right here, I'm seeing that this frame rail right here took a lick. This is my new truck. Why is it all busted? Because yeah. everything I buy is busted. Mm -hmm. So that took a lick right there. So now I'm wondering, is that frame rail bent? Um, Why is this your new car? It just is. So I don't know. When you're doing this stuff and you don't have fancy computer stuff, you just kind of have to do things to make things fit. So normally what the plans are, and we're looking for, I'm looking for signs of anything else that tells me what it's bent. Um, normally what I do is I, I guess on it and try to get it off an educated guess and nine out of 10 times or no, crap, a lot more than that. 99 out of 100 times I'm probably right. Um, then I send it through alignment. As long as they can get it within alignment, within spec, the truck's good to go. The only thing that you care about with frame damage a, you want all your panels to line up, but B, the only thing that frame damage matters is your alignment. If you have frame damage, you can't get the vehicle in alignment, and it's going to eat tires for the rest of its life. So as long as you, it don't really matter if the, this sounds terrible, but it don't matter if the frame damage is correct or not, as long as the truck goes in alignment and it don't crab walk, which my guys check for that stuff because the alignment guys I use are amazing. Um, that's it. So... We're gonna get in here and make some pulls and get started. And I'll show you what we see across the way. And we already see that sway bar links, which are very confusing. That one is rolled out. And that one over there is rolled out. Um, they jumped out of their bushing. So we have shiny spot right here. So that rubber is definitely supposed to be right there. Let's see what we got over here. We're just looking for signs of damage. And this one over here is also jumped out. So let's see here. This shiny spot's on the outside and that shiny spot's on the outside. So I think just the whole sway bar's moved. And then that link's also blowed outwards. Not unless that's how it's supposed to be. This bar is definitely bent. Um, I really feel like this bar is bent because it's pretty far back. If we look down like that, you can kind of see that lower bar. Okay, that lower bar down there definitely looks bent. So we need to put in a order for that. Besides that, I think everything else is okay. So we need to put in a bar order for the two center bars, basically. This one and this one. The sway bar is also bent, actually, now that I look at it. Uh, the sway bar is bent right there in the center. So, which the sway bar don't matter if it's bent. We don't... It's, it doesn't mess with anything. I mean, it's okay for it to be bent. It will still work. Um, yeah, besides, I don't really see anything. So let me get in here, throw some heat to these bolts. You always want to heat these up because Ford has Loctite on them. The first thing I want to do, and I want to see if the frame rails spring. I want to take measurements before I loosen them. See if they spring or anything move. And um, then we will just take this slowly, one step at a time see what we get uh the good thing is that none of our fender gaps are wrong so all of our fender gaps are correct on both sides uh the hood gap to the fender is correct meaning that the front end is not over left to right i think just the front of the frame rail got hit and it moved um the fender gaps are all correct on this side the hood alignment's correct everything's correct you can see that it got folded in right here which we'll get that back out and it took a hit right here and then again that's our frame rail right there so reading this accident, it's almost like definitely the impact force 
was right here. Um, leading me to believe if anything is bent, it's probably this one. But I'm going to have to get deeper up in there and see if I can see a kink or something. Let me see what I can find. We spray it, or we undid the bolts and the frame rails didn't move at all. Um, not too worried about them. With it being a solid axle, they can move that axle left to right. And it's not that big of a difference. So I'm not super, super obsessed over the one inch spread difference. Let's get this rack set up. All right, let's see here. Let's get down here where we can safely see what's going on. Now that strap was already broke and I just tied it back together. So it might break again. I'm hoping it holds. about to say, about to say are we already maxed out uh this valve is open i guess all right let's try that again some pulling force right there buddy all right let's, uh, let's take a look at what we got looking at this thing some more and when that sway bar bent in the center okay if it bends in the center then of course the sway bar link over there and the sway bar link over here if my fingernails are sway bar links then when it bends in the center it's going to push the sway bar links out or the ends out as it bends right here in the center it's going to blow the ends out so that's going to be the reason why both are blowed out um i'm just still analyzing piece by piece trying to figure out what's going on this is one new development it's sitting down here looking we do got a bent rim right there so we do got a bent front rim all right after i feel like a fault for my life last night with this freaking stomach bug uh back at it again this morning trying to hang in there make a little tiny bit of progress we fixed this outer fan shroud now this fan shroud is anywhere from 150 to 300 and up uh depending on where you buy it if you buy it from the dealer ebay used whatever um so basically this piece right here this circle piece okay this piece right here is not cheap at all uh the gas trucks are cheap the dodges are cheap but for some reason a 674 diesel it's not cheap so mine was broke down here on the bottom Okay, and so what I did was I panel bonded it, fixed it with panel bond. Now this is the importance of watching all of my videos that you possibly can if you're trying to get ahead in life, because I go over uh, sometimes very in depth on some videos of how to use this stuff so you already know. Um, so I'm gonna assume that you already know because we are not going over it again. Uh, you missed out if you did and you need to go back and look at some of the panel bonding videos that we've done because we've used them on the race car, we've used them on repairing vehicles, we've used them on the wife's vehicle. I mean, we've used it on the race car a couple times. So it's very important stuff to uh, do, but we got work time of 90 minutes, clamp time of four hours and cure time of 24 hours. So this is gonna sit all weekend, um, but that's good stuff. So looks good to me. Ah, should be nice and strong. This thing don't do nothing but just sit in there. Um, I haven't put that bolt on that side because I don't want to put the bolt inside the panel bond. I want to wait till the panel bond is completely dry uh, before we tighten that bolt down. However, where is that bolt? We'll go ahead and at least just start a couple threads so we don't lose it. And that way, if we forget to tighten it down, it's already there at least. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to replace that. I try to replace as little as possible to save money because uh, there's no reason the other top two tabs are perfectly fine. We did have to buy the lower piece. Um, and replace that but we can't put that in today until that fully sets also up. Also able to find our little tab still stuck in the rubber, rubber piece for the radiator and glue this piece back on so we'll let this thing sit up over the weekend. Also it looks like that when it's not broke it goes right here and the rubber of the radiator goes on top of it so uh, that should hold. Panel bond stuff's really strong. I put it on there underneath it and put it around it so it should hold. <laughs> 